you look at when the Trojans were trying to get Drake Jackson and they didn't really recruit Kayvon Thibodeau was hard, which makes no sense to me. I think, like, if you want a top prospect, you prioritize them first. And then you prioritize other guys and the roles that you want them. Uh, they, it's just in recruiting. Like, yeah, you can't be everywhere, but you don't just let a guy like Kelvin Thibodeau, Panay Sewell, who, by the way, the only Polynesian to ever win the Outland Trophy. That's still an amazing feat to me. And the only Oregon lineman to ever win it. And then Justin Flo went to Upland. One of the fat. Honestly, he reminds me of DJ Williams. Somebody said it on Twitter. But he's like literally this era's version of DJ Williams. I've never seen somebody play like a grown man in high school at linebacker the way that dude does. By the way, uh, DeForest Gabriel, I think that's his name. No, DeGabriel Forrest? Either way, he was like a top, one of the top uh, linebackers in the country, in particular California last year. He went to Texas, but he had to medically retire because he had spinal stenosis. God but, damn. Yeah. So is that the upload linebacker? No, 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 no. He went to like Centennial. I don't think he went to. I don't think he went to Centennial, but mm. he went to a really high ranking school last year. I can't remember the name right now, but yeah, DeForest Gabriel. You can just look up his name. Texas linebacker last year. What a he's a five star backer. Um, and I, I, I was like, he might be like a Derek Johnson type, develop a strong pass rush. But these are just names that, like. Everybody assumes, like, it used to be destined. Oh, you're a five-star player in L.A.? Oh, you're going to USC? You might go to UCLA? You just somehow might end up at Stanford? You might go to Cal? Cal used to get five stars, too. Um, And I look at how they lose out on Bryce Young, who's going to Alabama, and actually it was a higher rated than Toa, Toa Tunga, Tua Tunga Vailoa. And who honestly I think should just go to the NFL draft. He shouldn't even go back to Bama. Like, why would you waste your time? They already have Mac Jones. They have your replacement. They have your little brother and they have Bryce Young. <laughs> There's no reason for you to go back. Like, bro, don't be Ben don't Affleck. Don't be that guy. <laughs> don't be Ben Affleck that in Days to Confused. Don't be Matthew McConaughey. Don't be uh, a lingerer. Like, just leave, bro. You're already the all time leader in touchdown passes in Alabama history. There's nothing left for you to do. Don't say, I want to heal up. Bust in the NFL. Don't be like, oh, faith, family, football. Kiss my ass. Go get your money. Stop being stupid. Alabama's not going to pay your bills. Ask Vince Young. Damn. Ask Glenn Coffey. Damn. Ask, I could go down the list. <clears throat> the first one was the buck shot. The second one will really kill you. So, um,. You look at it like this. Justin Flo went to Oregon. Could have went to Clemson. It would have probably been better if he'd gone to Clemson because he's out of state, out of sight, out of mind. Which, by the way, I think everybody wants to talk crap about Clemson playing a week schedule. You know what? Maybe if Clemson just jumped to the SEC, that'd be really funny. Like, oh, we get to kick Alabama's ass every year. If I was Dabo Sweeney and they happen to win a national title again this year, I'd be like, you know what? Hey, SEC, playoff. I got, I got the perfect solution for everybody. We'll make a trade. You send you send a team, SEC, you send a team to come play in the ACC, and Clemson will play in the SEC just in football exclusively so we can kick Nick Saban's ass every year. That would explode the world on fire, but it's probably not going to happen. Bitch. <clears throat> You're welcome. So, anyway... Yeah, a bunch of top flight California players, in particular some of the best ones, like I just mentioned, all leaving the state. Going to Oregon, going to Alabama, going to, going to Clemson. Um, But luckily, you know, a couple stayed. A couple stayed. But, you know, as you see, they had like a, they had like the 76 class. Georgia Southern had a higher recruiting class than them at one point. I think they finished with it too. But this is just early signing day. The last official signing day is until like February. Or January, February. So, there's that. But, uh, the biggest things are, shout out to Londell High School. Former guests on the show. They had five guys get D1 scholarships. Now, at a school like Londell, that's historic. Never happened before. Ever. Like, ever, ever. Ever, ever. Michael Greer, receiver... Got an offer. He came on late this year. He went to San Jose State. 
Jane Daniels, uh, he was committed to Middle Tennessee State, but he went to Kansas. You got Michael Steen, Elijah Jackson, both going to Washington. Keen, Steen's going to play safety. He's been a quarterback, and he's like top 10 all-time in interceptions in California history. Yay, yay, yay. And then Tui Tui Delopu. I totally probably butchered your last name. I'm so, I'm so sorry. But his brother Marlon plays at USC. He, strong side defensive end who could probably bulk up and become a tackle, he committed to USC. So he'll be playing with his brother. You got to knock the fuck out. I mean, yeah, it's true. You don't want to pick on two brothers who are both D1 and go to the same school. But yeah, it's just really embarrassing. <laughs> it's really embarrassing how bad just USC... Did recruiting. Not even UCLA, because nobody really cares about UCLA like that. They'll get their recruits. But they're just so... Like, everyone else is just surpassing them in recruiting. And it's kind of disturbing. All right, Can anything else you want to say? For high school football on? or college? For for signing day, because we got to move on. We just spent That's 40 for minutes on day. college football. That's it. We just spent 40 minutes on college football. Yeah. That's it. There's really nothing else to say. Um, All right, man. So on that note, um, oh, yeah, shout out to Emmett Smith's son who went to, is going to Stanford, and his dad was like, "You, you see this hat? I'm a Florida Gator. My son don't have to be a Florida Gator. He can go wherever he wants, which is dope." Oh, and uh, KJ Costello, quarterback for Stanford in the transfer portal. He was like second team All Pac-12 last year. Stanford is losing like a ton of talent, so the fact that they're getting some pretty good recruits. I don't know what's happening over there. They went four and eight. They're getting recruits, but all their players are leaving. Oh. But yeah, man. So on a little bit of a darker note, um, shout out to Herman Boone, uh, the coach that remember the Titans was about. He died today, I believe. It was either today or last night. But he's no longer with us at the age of eighty four in Virginia. I believe he died at. But, yeah, he totally inspired Remember the Titans, the movie that pretty much brought together every single high school football team. And since, admitted that Ryan Gosling is a horrible horrible DB. <laughs> should probably at best be a holder or a punter. <laughs> Makes sense. He's probably, like, hella short. No, he's just a t- – he can't cover. He's, he was – the shits. He was awful. Like, Ryan Gosling is so terrible as a DB in that movie. But, honestly – if you're gonna since we're talking Ryan Gosling, just go watch Blue Valentine. Congratulations, your day will be ruined forever. Go watch Ryan. Go watch Blue Valentine. The other story that dropped today, uh, big one. By the way, Radio died too. The guy who was actually based off Radio, he died. He was like 85. Damn, that's crazy. Sad, sad day for sports movies. Indeed. So the Pro Bowl starters dropped. Oh well, the whole roster started. But I just say starters because half these dudes don't even play and like 30 alternates end up playing just because the Super Bowl teams, especially the Ravens make it since they had 12 players. Yeah. But the Chiefs also had six. The Saints had seven. They're among the best teams. While the Dolphins and Giants had zero. Makes sense. Good. And... Outside of that, are there any sort of snubs that kind of jump out at you? Any other surprises that you're just like, well, this is a total legacy? Some people say Eric Kendricks for the Minnesota Vikings. DeMario Davis for the Saints. Yeah, I heard, De- I heard a lot of DeMario Davis. I heard a lot of, of Dak, but... Dak yeah. hasn't had bad stats this year. No, he's actually had really good stats, but... Which is why he should be a pro bowler. He nearly almost pissed away the... Playoffs has nothing to do with the Pro Bowl. Uh, I yeah, played Jason true, Garrett. It has nothing to do with the Pro Bowl. Eh, Dak's not all free. The Pro Bowl is about stats, not how if you help your team win. Uh, the Pro Bowl is kind of about popularity and stats. That's but, how the alternates get in. Oh, you yeah, there was stats a, to be there. There was a case I read about how like Khalil Mack kind of got in on name recognition over some guys like Zadarius and Preston Smith in. Green Bay, um, but yeah, they were also saying Kendrick should have got in. I heard Corey Littleton, but you know you can't leave out Wagner or I'm not putting Corey Littleton Keighley. in the Pro Bowl. There was there was multiple takes on that. 
Chris um, Carson, who's basically been the backbone of the Seahawks, who are uh, been the who are actually I think the number one team in the NFC right now. Oh, Galladay got snubbed. Galladay definitely got snubbed. I think it's what his second year as a thousand yard re- receiver. He has. By the way, the Raiders passed on him, and he's had what three shitty quarterbacks. Four at least this year. I'm saying this year. At least four this year. But yeah, man, they were also saying Justin Simmons should have got it in. Tom yeah. Brady didn't get in on legacy, which was weird. Because Tom Brady hasn't legacy. had a good year. Tom Brady has not had a good year. Yeah, He's but been trash. No. Yeah, but there's a lot of people who saying Aaron Rodgers is having an equally mediocre year. But, it's the but NFC. he still got in. It's the NFC though. The AFC has much better quarterbacks. Geno okay. Atkins has barely played this year. He got in. Frank Clark started off hella slow this year. They were talking about him being a massive free agency bust. He came on late, but still. Jalen my- Ramsey has been like a solid year, but it's not Jalen Ramsey-esque. This is why I would change the rules for Pro Bowl voting. I would take it away from the fans to a certain extent. There's got to be some way to weigh it, like yeah. weigh different Stats. categories, like merit. Oh, like, you lead, like, like weigh, weigh you lead the league categories. in sacks. You're in. Like I would, be, I would do it solely based on stats, and then all the alternates, I would let the fans vote on. Mm, that's actually a good idea. You lead the league in like touchdowns. You should like be in that. the Pro Bowl. Oh, you have the most yards. Let's say you go top ten, or you go, you go top five and work your way down. The top five leading rushers in the league. Should be in the Pro Bowl, yes? Top yeah, six? Definitely. Especially now, in a receiver league that yeah. we're in now. Let's say, oh, you've thrown 45 touchdown passes or 47 touchdown passes, uh, but Tom Brady threw like 28. I'm going to put the guy who has 47 in. Oh, you had a one, you were a one year hit wonder? That's fine. You're a Pro Bowler this year. Who leads the league in interceptions? I'm going to look at the top six guys, and if it's a tie, if it's too much of a tie, then I'm going to go to the tape. Maybe you just make the starters the all pros, and then you let the the fans but vote the all on the pros secondary is the end part. of the season. All pros in the season. Pro Bowl voting is right right now. I think they vote in the regular season, but it doesn't come out till the end of the season. Yeah, but they should probably change that. The Pro Bowl voting should be done probably after the first playoff game. I wonder if the situation would be worse if players voted. It would. Like, like, would players just vote for their friends and, like, you know, the popular names would still get in? Or you – because – I think you'd find out really who likes who and who doesn't. Yeah, because, I I mean, like – Josh Allen got snubbed, though, for real. Like, I don't think – like – The defensive end, Josh Allen. If you're not playing a team, I don't really think you're going to be paying attention to the whole league like that. Now I think people watch positions outside of pocket, highlights. But outside of highlights, watching, if you want a contract year, if you looking to see like, wait, this dude got in over me, but I locked but him up. But that's why you have agents and handlers. But I'm saying if you haven't, that's my point. If you haven't, play, if you're not playing them this year, like, are okay, you are you really Rose checking? Ha- are you really checking them? That's true. That's a fair point. But look at all Drew Ro- Rosenhaus's clients. How many of them would have a beef against somebody else? Or let's say you're trying to get. Let's say they're trying to Rosenhaus is trying to sign a guy who may be leaning towards signing with him in the off season or looking for a new agent representation. Wouldn't it be a great gesture? Obviously it would be off you know off the books and it would be like Rosenhaus wouldn't be the one initiating it because that's a conflict of interest. But let's say ten of the guys that Rosenhaus represents, top flat guys all vote for this one dude. They all get on their social media and campaign for one dude. Like, there's so many different ways, like, the player voting could be tainted. Yeah, for sure. So, I think it should just go off. Especially because bonuses are based off that. Exactly. Yeah. That's why you have to, you leave it up to the stats. If you lead the league in sacks and people say you suck, well, so be it. You led the league in sacks. Yeah. Lorenzo Alexander. Remember, uh, wow, you're petty. Shaquille Barrett. Shaquille Barrett had a fast start to the season. Good start. Is he the best edge rusher in football? No. He has the most sacks. Is he better than Khalil Mack? Hell no. All right, man. So, time for Take Your Tangent. We got to make it quick since we're already we're late. We're good. But, uh, first up, for those of you who didn't see on Monday night, Drew Brees uh, broke, what, the all-time? He broke... I forgot what record he broke. He broke the single game completion record, ninety six point seven percent. He only dropped one pass. He only.